Hey everyone, Coach Investor back to another Lemonade video for today. So the company reported Q4 earnings at the time of making this video, the stock is down 16% or so. Now I'm also filming this video before the earnings call. So maybe by the end of this video, you will see me wearing something else because they do report earnings just before the market opens. I'm filming this just after the market closed. All right, I'll be real with you. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it as I said in my preview video. If you want to watch that just to compare, it's going to be in the top right corner. I have zero issues being critical on one of my holdings. Just because I own something doesn't mean I will not be critical. Like I said, I'm extremely critical of Square. And that's my second biggest holding. Lemonade is just 2% of my portfolio. But still, I like the company. I did not like this quarter at all. So we're going to have a look at all of that in this video. I'm going to have a comparison on the screen to what they expected in the last quarter, their guidance see if they met or they beat. Little spoiler here, they met and they beat, but that's not the negative side. The negative side here is that this quarter just wasn't great. Guidance for next quarter isn't good either. Still losing a lot of money and still spending a lot of money. They did say that 2022 will be the peak of their losses. Well, I do hope that 2022 is going to be the peak of their losses and the start of a more profitable business model. But we're going to discuss all of that in this video and again, earnings call at the end of the video. But before that, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 free stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Now, Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 4x. So all you have to do is go to fool.com forward slash couch investor to get your free 10 stock picks now. now. Actually, before I jump into the earnings, I just want to say one thing because yes, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool because I am writing also for The Motley Fool since those videos are going on their website as well. Yes, Lemonade was recommended by The Motley Fool when the price was much higher. As I said in my last video, got some winners, you've got some losers. As of today, Lemonade is a big loser. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, if you look at the Motley Fool's track record, they are picking very, very good winners. Again, if you want to choose to sign up, you can sign up. You don't have to sign up. Now let's go and look at the numbers. So Inforce premiums grew 78% year over year to $380 million. That was in line with their guidance, but at the low end, not the high end. Premium per customer reached $266, up 25% year over year. Total customers grew 43% year over year to 1.427 million customers. That's up approximately 60,000 quarter over quarter. We've seen better quarters. We've seen quarters of 100,000 new customers. Then again, with winter, Christmas, holiday, maybe people aren't inclined to join Lemonade, an insurance company. And before I touch on this horrible number here on the left, gross earned premium is up 78% year over year to $89 million. Very nice. And now this thing right here, 96% gross loss ratio. We're gonna jump to that aspect in just a bit because they do explain why it's so high, but I'm gonna share my opinion on this in a moment. I am skipping through a lot of just them talking about their product, blah, blah, blah. They say here, indeed, 2022 is expected to be our year of peak losses. Then talk about the comparison, them and other insured tech companies. We've talked about that in other videos. Basically, they are providing the whole category of insurance, not just one specific product. And then a contrast with incumbents, basically saying that they are moving faster, adapting to everything, etc. And they end here by saying that they expect all of this, the flywheel AI machine learning, they expect this to express itself in loss ratio and expense ratio trend lines already in the second half of 2022. And for this advantage to compound in the years to follow. I'm very, very curious to see how the second half of 2022 will turn out. Now they do mention already something about Lemonade car insurance. So it's off to a strong start in Illinois with about three quarters of Lemonade car customers bundling it with at least one other Lemonade policy. The sales generated by Lemonade Car in Illinois in the fourth quarter represent more than three times an increase relative to the same period sales following 
their Lemonade Pet Lounge in Illinois. Okay, so that's already something positive. As for Metro Mile, they expect this transaction to be complete in the second quarter. In their free year guidance, they do not calculate anything with regards to Metro Mile. All right, and now we've reached here loss ratio. This is one of the most important questions I want to be answered on the earnings call. So I really hope that this question submitted by this person gets answered. You're gonna know at the end of this video. So they say here that their Q4 gross loss ratio was 96% up from 73% a year ago and 77% in the third quarter, which is also higher than expected. A meaningful driver of this sequential increase is an unfavorable prior period development due to a handful of older large losses for which we under-reserved. Notably, there was no spike in our accident quarter loss ratio from Q3 to Q4. Okay, if this is true, the next quarter should be much, much better, which we'll know in three months' time. To understand their elevated loss ratio in recent quarters, we'd like to highlight a theme from last quarter's letter. Basically, what they're saying here throughout all of this is that as they launch new products, as they launch in new regions, gross loss ratio tends to be much higher in the early stages. As those mature, loss ratio should come down. As they said in the last quarter, they expect loss ratio for all their products to be below 75% for the future. You know my view on this. I thought this would be much better than 75%. And also below 75%, that doesn't really mean much. That means 74, could mean 60, could mean 50, could mean 65, 69, who knows? Now, before I jump into the annual dollar retention, which is actually flat, it's still 82%. Like we said in the previous video, the average for the industry is around 84%. And the top dogs are in the mid 90% or so. So again, there's still a long way to go. Lemonade is only 5.5 years old, so still very, very young. Now, as for the loss ratio, yes, it's true that they're launching a lot, a lot of new products, launching new regions. So yes, the loss ratio tends to be higher. But with AI, machine learning, the way they advertised all of this, you would have expected it to be a bit lower and not 96%, right? Because 77% is already high. And if you're telling everyone that AI machine learning should help with that, obviously this is going to take some time because the AI needs a lot of data. Machine learning needs a lot of data to process to improve the whole system. When you're just five years young, you don't really have that much data, even though you're built on technology. It just takes time. You just reached 1 million customers at the end of last year, the beginning of last year, excuse me. So it does take time. Maybe they're moving extremely fast right now, and it will improve in the longer term. Again, this is something we'll have to wait and see. Now, a bit of positive, even though I don't really look at revenue that much, that grew 100% year over year to $41 million. Gross profit increased by 4% to $7.8 million. Adjusted gross profit increased 33% to $12.6 million. And we're gonna go expenses also is a bit higher the last quarter, it increased close to 90%. I'm going to touch on this in just a bit. Adjusted EBITDA loss was in line with their guidance. Loss of $51.2 million, an increase of $21.5 million. Increase is due to operating expenses. Then the cash, nothing changed there. But I do want to show you one quick thing here. So as you can see here, revenue, if you look at it, Nice, right? A growth of 100% year over year. Perfecto. But then if you look at net loss total expense, that also grew 100% year over year. I know they said that 2022 will be the peak of their losses. So let's see if by the end of this year, revenue keeps on growing and total expense and net loss doesn't follow the 100% growth trend. And as for Q1 guidance, they expect Inforce Premium to come in between $405 and $410 million, gross earned premium between $92 and $94 million, revenue to stay basically flat, adjusted EBITDA loss to increase. So not great, but the peak should be 2022. That does not mean that this quarter or next quarter will be the peak, could be the last two quarters. 
And these are the numbers for the full year. So enforced premium a bit over half a billion dollars, gross and premium growing quite nicely. So revenue grows quite nicely as well. Adjusted EBITDA loss much higher than last year. Then capital expenditure of approximately $10 million. So like I said, I'm critical when I need to be and I'm cheerful when I need to be. This is the time to be critical. Obviously, time will tell if this plays out. I'm not selling, but I'm not adding anything at the moment. Now, please wait until I get back from the earnings call. All right, so earnings call just finished. As you can see, different shirt. So they talked about a couple of things. Obviously, this video might be out a bit after the market opens, so apologies for that. But then again, with Russia invading Ukraine, doesn't really matter that much because everything will be extremely red. So first up, they talked about buybacks, whether it's for the company or for individuals. For individuals, everybody does what's best for himself. For the company, no buybacks are expected because they rather use the cash to develop their own business and grow the business, which makes sense. Second of all, with regarding to the high cash burn, whether they should raise cash, how will they do that, etc. Right now, they don't feel they need to raise cash. They've raised in the past $1.5 billion with $1.1 billion in the bank right now. They feel that's more than enough to grow the business, so no need to raise some cash. Okay, great, good answer. Then they talk a bit about their technology, the gross loss ratio, the question I wanted answered in this video. So first of all, they reiterated their statement of saying that 2022 will be the year of peak losses. In the next six to nine months, that should be over because it's probably logical that they have invested heavily in their business extremely fast that lays down the groundworks and then it should be smooth sailing from there on out. So we have to wait until they exit 2022 going into 2023 to see if that's correct or not. Because in this report, they did use every excuse and explanation that they could have. Right now, we need to see execution. So talking about the gross loss ratio, the expenses, etc., the launching of new products. So they did say that one, they invest in their technology. They're pretty confident in their technology. All of the data that they see in the background shows improvement. They gave an example with renters, which is their oldest policy. A couple of years ago, renters was around 300% loss ratio approximately. Right now, it's, I believe, under 60%. So they see some improvement as the product matured. The same thing goes for all the other pet, car, life, home. All of that will obviously take some time, but they already see some improvement in the background. Also, with regards to the use of AI, two thirds of customers have no interaction with customer support and one third of claims is sorted by AI. So basically extremely fast and at close to zero cost for the company. So that's great. Again, they reiterate their full confidence in their technology and the way it is working. And if you mix all of that together, they expect EBITDA margin to improve over time as the company improves, as peak losses reach their peak, and the business itself starts showing how strong it is. Obviously, that's just a matter of time will tell. As I said at the start of this video, I don't plan on selling any shares. I don't plan on adding any shares anytime soon right now, especially not in the current market environment. Just wanna see if the next two quarters, if what they said right now, is true or not. Again, I need to be critical when I need to. I will be cheerful when I have to as well. Now, I do want to know your thoughts about Lemonade's quarter. Let me know down in the comments below. Obviously, with the current market environment, don't do anything you will regret in a week or two. Sometimes the best decision is just to do nothing. And that will be it for this video. If you liked it, consider leaving a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.